Hey, what's up guys? I'm Rick Novleski with TechSpin. So we've been using this really amazing white motherboard in our last couple of builds, and I thought, why not do a review of it? MSI has really pioneered the market with first the titanium line with silver covering the whole slab, then the mortar and tomahawk lines having a light and dark gray theme, but not completely white. Although I am loving the tomahawk Southbridge cover, that looks really slick. And let's not forget that Endermax ETS T50 air cooler we covered in our last review, which is a really great match for this MSI product. If you wanted something smaller, you could pick up a deep cool Captain 240 all-in-one cooler in white like I have installed on my MSI Z270 X-Power Gaming Titanium, which has a small footprint and shows off a bit more of the board. So what do you think? For your next build, will you try out an AIO water cooler or an air cooler setup? Leave your pick in the comments. And let's get on to this review right after this. So this board is designed for the Coffee Lake 8th generation CPUs. And a great pairing for it would be either the i3-8100 if you're a light gamer and PC user, or an i5-8400 from moderate gamers. If you're upgrading an old PC, you'll find that an i3-8100 build makes a lot of sense and won't break the bank with a CPU at 120 bucks, this board at 125, and an 8 gig stick of DDR4 RAM from 80 to 90 dollars. That's a whole new setup for about 325 bucks. The B360 and H310 chipsets are the budget, non-overclocking boards meant to complement the Z370 overclocking side, so good choices are an i3 or i5. The MSI B360 Gaming Arctic has dual channel slots for up to 64 gigs of DDR4 memory, which support the Extended Memory Profile or XMP overclocking type RAM, which run at 2133, 2400, or 2666 MHz. With two PCIe 3.0 times 16 Gen 3 slots, the board can support two-way AMD Crossfire on the two slots and you can supply additional power for this configuration with the onboard 6-pin PCI power connected to your power supply. No SLI support for it. The top main slot has a steel armor covering to stiffen and protect the board, and this slot can do x16 or x4 Gen 3. And there's four PCIe 3.0 x1 Gen 3 slots for add-on cards. For the rear connectors, the board has DVI and DisplayPort and supports DisplayPort 1.2 out of the box, so you can do 4K. Next is the forward-thinking inclusion of both the USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, both of which can transfer at speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. The Intel i219V chipset handles the gigabit LAN with two more USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports here, as well as two available from the header, which can transfer at five gigabits a second. Total, there are five SATA 6 gig a second ports with SATA 1 turning off if you decide to use the M2 slot I was talking about before for a blazing fast boot or program drive. The M2 is right below the CPU socket and can handle 22-110 spec storage, though most drives, the most standard M2 drives, are 2280 sized. Along with the CPU fan header, there's a pump header along with five extra fan headers along the top right and bottom of the B360 Gaming with two connectors for four USB 2.0 ports, the remaining two being for the keyboard and mouse. At the bottom, we have an RGB header which can control the common 5050 type 12 volt RGB LED strips. And you can use MSI's Mystic Light software to control them all together. The Realtek High Definition Audio ALC892 chip handles the onboard 7.1 channel sound with the visible LED strip separation for a cleaner signal out. And there's MSI Audio Boost, which can better drive larger headphones. The gold connectors will give a better connection and a cleaner output overall. So my recommendation, using your PC for casual gaming, surfing the net and watching videos, get an i3. Those gamers looking for good frame rates and some moderate uh, photo and video work should grab an i5. And you could always grab the cheaper MATX MSI H310 Gaming Arctic and save 40 bucks, bringing the total down to just 280. Conversely, if you wanted a more capable CPU like the i5-8400, that's an extra 60 bucks for around 30% faster benchmarks on average, with some showing up to 50% increase. So that's a really great deal. 
By the way, I definitely advise getting a PCIe SSD, like the M2, for your Windows drive. And for around 100 bucks for a 250 gig capacity, and with the 3000 megs a second mark just becoming mainstream, you can step up from using an SSD to boot. I've been using a Samsung 960 Evo for two years now, and what a difference it makes in responsiveness for Windows and programs. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Now this MSI board does come in both black and this white gaming Arctic variant. Both look really great and will be a great step up for most older computers, especially with the forward-thinking USB Type-C reversible connector on board. Paired with either an all-white air cooler or maybe a deep cool Captain 240 white, the MSI B360 Gaming Arctic deserves high praise and rates a 10 on our meter. Great features, very good pricing, and the all-white design is unique and definitely a head turner. And to put my money where my mouth is, I have already purchased two of them. If you're looking to get a new computer or to upgrade, this board will be an excellent choice. And with a graphics card, you can easily make this the heart of a media slash home theater PC or gaming rig. So I'm awarding this a Techspin Platinum Award for its excellent build design and feature set. Now, I need to note that I recommend a graphics card for home theater here as there's no HDMI on board. And you'll need HDMI passing through your home receiver in order to decrypt the HDCP protection and decode the sound. The lack of HDMI here wasn't a deal breaker for me, though I did have to weigh it and decide to drop a little bit more to grab another video card. And if you weren't planning on grabbing a graphics card at this time, you could definitely grab the smaller MATX MSI H310 we talked about earlier, which does have an HDMI 4K at 30 frames a second and still has an M2 slot and is $45 cheaper, a really awesome deal. Overall, I'm really happy with this board, and if you pick one up, please let us know your thoughts and experience with it in the comments. I had fun shopping for white components to match the finished build, and you saw the both of the black and white and full white builds the last two episodes that we released. Just a quick reminder, if you want to connect with us online, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Techspin Review. You can also help by buying through our affiliate links, visiting our wish list on Amazon, or support us directly on Patreon, both links below. So what did you think of the overall design? What CPU cooler are you using, or did you find a good deal? Let us know. And we always like to hear your ideas for upcoming episodes, so do feel free to let us know what you'd like to see next. Please hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, or tell us how we can improve for next time. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content. Be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we do respond to most. So if you have a question or if we miss something, then please do tell us down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you all very much for watching and see you again really soon. Bye for now.